Welcome to MTD Technical Corner. Now today I'm talking to Phil from Hexagon about WorkNC. Now Phil, first of all, can you give us a little overview about what WorkNC actually is, please? Yeah, so WorkNC has been on the market for about 30 plus years now. Um, so our area of expertise is mold and dye, pattern making and design studios. That's where we sort of fit, so yeah. And it's amazing how you, you're speaking off camera about how uh, huge and how WorkNC is actually is a massive global brand. I'd personally never heard of it before, but it's big in automotive, in mold and dye, pattern making. I mean, you look at the beautiful finishes on, yeah. on some of these parts, and you imagine mold and dye like a part like this. I mean, there must be some real strict requirements by customers such as your automotives, your phone manufacturers that require um, a piece of software like WorkNC. How does WorkNC make those things easy? Yeah, so I mean, WorkNC specializes in complex 3D shapes. So we do everything from two and a half D up to five axis. Um, and the way we sort of, we, we help customers is, is we automate the process as best we can. So we can automate the feature recognition inside Work and See. So we, can, we have a nice connection with Visi, where we can take the attributes from Visi into Work and See and recognize a, a hole. So it could be a tapped hole, it could be a drilled hole, it could be a reamed hole, for, for example. Um, and then when we go into the free axis, so um, we can do uh, template driven programming. So everything from, from your roughing down to your finishing is, is can be driven to an extent, maybe 60%. So if you've done some geometry which before and it's similar, you can just pull those tool paths in and apply it to the, to the component and, and, and start the calculation. So what's quite nice about work and see is you don't have to just do one calculation at a time. You can actually do up to sort of seven calculations, up to 14 calculations, and just let it rock and roll. Um, so we have some great functionality within work and see. So the collision checking is, 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 is extremely, extremely safe and, and, and uh, flexible. So that means when you see a collision and it will, it will identify a collision in red, you don't have to sort of recalculate a toolpath. You can stop and change the holder. You can cut the toolpath in, in, in into sections, which is nice. Um, and then you can you, you have other options as well. So instead of changing the holder, you want to keep the holder short to, to make sure the surface finish is, is good. Um, and you can use a number of different methods. You could use Auto 5, for example, which is one of our great a great sort of um, diamonds within Work and See. So it will it will convert a three axis toolpath into into a five axis toolpath, um, and actually control the unwind. Uh, so you actually see all those happening inside the simulation, which is, which is nice. Some solutions you don't actually get that. Um, and then we have Auto 3 Plus 2. So when you haven't got the, the sort of five axis machines these days, you can use Auto 3 Plus 2. So and it will convert that in, and separate the areas for us, which is which is really cool. Okay, because I guess most mold and dye manufacturers will have a big, these big kind of five axis yeah. head machines, yeah. and they take a long time to machine. Yeah. But one of the other uh, sectors you've been talking about is pattern making, yeah. which is it's slightly quicker cycle times. And instead of trying to optimize for a surface finish, and it's going to take 30 hours, we don't care how long yeah. it takes. Instead with pattern making, you said you were trying to get parts in and out of the machine as quick as possible. Yeah, so you, 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 you sort of, your standard pattern makers, they want to get their part on, and it's normally out of soft material, like motherboard. And we want to get the part on, and you sometimes you might you might bulk load the, uh, the the machine up and put four or five different parts on, and then run the programs. So it's about it's about speed of programming. It's about um, confidence in the in the software. So making sure the collision checking actually is correct, and making sure that you're using the, using that machine to to the, to the best of its ability. So it could be keep the tool short, use the five axis capability, so convert three axis to five axis or three plus two. And what about complex tool form as well? Do they help reduce yeah. the cycle time? Yeah, they do. I mean, we, we've got a, we've been developing it now for quite a long time. Um, so we use advanced tool form in, in three axis. So that means where you use high feed cutters, it's actually the true geometry, not a representation or radius. Um, but then we pass that down to your sort of, um, your three axis tool paths and we can actually use your barrel tools in three axis with a, with a controlled slope angle. Um, but where it sort of lends itself to its to its own is where we go into five axis and we can use any shape. So some solutions are sort of strict and they have to be, that's the shape of a barrel tool or lens tool or conical tool. We can use any shape, any design. So we can work with, with the tooling suppliers, with the customer and build a, um, a methodology to, to speed the process up. So some of our bigger customers, so a lot of our OEMs, they use, they use work and see and they're using barrel tools today which is nice. And you've touched on a little bit about collision checking. That's really important when you've got the mold and dye tooling, maybe the pattern making where there's really long cycles and you don't want to have to stand there for, for no, one wants to, no one can stand there or wants to stand there for 30 hours no. watching machine running the first program out. And so it's really important to instead do the collision checking in, uh, in the program, in, in Work and See. So how does it do collision checking um, properly? And how does it do collision checking such that once you do find a collision, you can actually reprogram without having to 
to, to work too hard and re recalculate it? No, that's a good question. So with work and see, um, you calculate a toolpath and then you can change the holder at any point without recalculating those, tool, those toolpaths. So if you get a collision, it will show you the area where the collision is and you can change the holder to make sure it's a longer holder or shrink fit or shorter holder, depending on what you have. But we also have the ability to um, to cut the toolpaths in sections. So you can, you can literally delete that toolpath out to make sure you don't go in areas where you get in a collision. The other options are you have, um, we, we now have, you can do collision checking and avoidance in roughing and in finishing. So you imagine if you're rapid, you're moving from one point to the other point, you can actually see if it's going through stock and it will tell you that you're going through stock in, in rapid, which is, which is quite new. It's recently, recently just come out in a new version. Okay, so making these parts, the mold and dies that take a very long time, pattern making that are quick turnaround, but you're trying to get as many parts out as possible. There are a lot of production pressures. And taking on a new piece of software like WorkNC might be quite daunting for the, the machine shops that are trying to keep, uh, maintain productivity while yeah. learning a new piece of software. How do you make that easier? Yeah, so um, we've been um, very successful over the last couple of years with WorkNC and, and, and actually swapping out uh, customers to our, our solution. Um, the software is, is key, of course, but at the end of the day, it's also there's a support. So we make sure that um, you, if you imagine you've had a customer that is using one platform for, for 20 years plus, we have to manage that customer so they can be productive quite quickly. So we work and see a couple of days training and they can actually start using it in anger. But, but the key is um, managing the process. So we'll go on site and test the post processes. We'll make sure um, all the cycles work within the post. We'll, do, we'll, we'll manage the training. We can actually manage the support, after support because all customers need after support. Um, and then it, it sort of tapers off. So the, the, the training requirement and tapers off and the guys are up and running quite quickly. And that's how you sort of, that's how I feel you swap out customers, especially when they've been using software for such a long time, because there's always a little bit of uh, nervousness around it. And they, that's why they sort of shy away from it sometimes. Okay, so if there's someone who's feeling like they've been, uh, they feel a lot more comfortable now, you've explained the whole turnkey process. It feels yeah. like they want to see what this is firsthand. Who do they need to get into contact with? Yeah, but they can go onto our website. Say, if they um, go onto the website, it's workandsee.com. Um, and then if they can contact us that, that way, that's fine. Um, or they can give us a call on the website as well. Brilliant. The contact details will be appearing on the screen. Um, thank you very much, Bill. Okay, no, thank you.